Okay, we're going to have a little look at how we fit a twist lock now. I've just got out a standard twist lock and these come effectively in three parts. So you'll have the, the part that twists. You'll have a um, washer to go on the back of that. Then you'll have the part that goes on the flap. And this actually is in three parts, well, four parts in this instance. So you have the front, you have the back panel, and you'll have two little screws. And they generally come with the screws already fitted. And before you even start, the best thing you can do is to actually try undoing those screws. Because sometimes I've had them and they are literally stuck in solid. Now those do come out, so that's fine. And there's nothing worse than cutting your hole and then realising that one of your screws has been cross-threaded as it's actually in manufacture, I think. So let's start with the piece that goes on the flap. So that's this part. Now I'm going to use, um, let me just find something to put my screws in because I'm going to take this to pieces. And I just don't want to lose my screws, so... I'm taking the screws out and I'm going to pop them over here and hope that I don't knock them off. So you can see there I've got a, a front and a back part. Now the back part that should be showing is usually the bit that's got the tool work on it. Um, the other side is shiny but it's not quite as nice, it's sort of marked. Now you need to figure out where exactly your um, twist lock's going to go and if you've got a pattern that actually uses the twist lock, ideally you need to use the size that it says because very often um, if it's got a marking then it might be different for different styles. But I'm going to use this, this rectangle one and show you how I would fit it. So I would mark, cent I would put it centrally wherever it is that I need to put it. I will mark the inside rectangle. I would also mark the outside. Now I would do that with chalk, not with one of these pens because I'm, I don't trust these pens to disappear, but it just gives me an idea of exactly where this is gonna be. And I would do that usually on the lining, although I'm actually doing it on the outside at this point. Um, it kind of depends what your fabric is made of. And I've also marked the two little holes. So you can see there that I've marked where that needs to go. Now, the one thing I will say is that these have um, a lip on the inside of the front part. And you can see that that's actually it's possibly an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more um, deep. So you need to have a flap that is deep enough to accommodate that. Otherwise, this is going to sit proud um, of your flap. So you do need, ideally need some foam or something like that in there. Now, if you're doing a bag that has a flap that doesn't have foam in, so maybe has Decaville inside, it's always worth just putting a little bit of foam um, stabiliser where the twist lock's going to be so that it sits nice and snugly. Um, so having made my mark, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to stitch around the outside so I'm going to stitch within that exterior mark that I made, but outside of that central rectangle. And I'm going to stitch probably, I'm going to say three sixteenths of an inch. It's not an exact measurement. I'm going to, I'm going to stitch halfway between the outside and the inside measurement. And this is just to make sure that everything stays put. So let's just... This stitching won't show, but it does keep all your layers together and makes everything a lot easier to stitch. And this is the way I do it. It's not necessarily the right way or the wrong way. This is just the way I like to do it. see that I've got a line of stitching I'm using green thread so you can see it and now I'm going to use my craft knife 
oops, it's got a bit of sticky stuff on it, just to make a cut inside of that. Central rectangle. Now that central rectangle was marked on the inside of that hole. We actually need the hole that we make to be slightly larger. So it actually sits tightly around the outside of that mark tightly around the outside of this lip so you can see that 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 needs to be a little bit bigger than the square that we've marked now we have options here and many of you will have um, these cutting uh, dies that you basically use with a hammer on a mat um, I think I've got they come in all different oh, you can see one that's actually full of foam there let me just get rid of the foam. They come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, and you can use one of those to cut out if you've got one the right size. If you haven't got one the right size, you can use a smaller one and just use it to cut one end and then use it to cut the other end. What you need is a, an old chopping board and a metal hammer. These have got really sharp edges, so please don't put your fingers on them to find out how sharp, because you will bleed. Um, they come in a whole, literally, you buy a whole set of them. And they're all different shapes and sizes to suit all sorts of different holes that you might want to cut. Um, I'm not going to use one of those because not everybody's got one of those. Um, and you do find that if I, if I start banging with hammers and stuff like that on my table, then the camera falls off its stand and I've got all sorts of problems. So I'm going to do this the old fashioned way. And I'm just going to use a pair of sharp scissors. Now I'm cutting about an eighth of an inch outside of my marked rectangle. You do sometimes have to kind of go back in and cut a little bit more out, but do it slowly and you'll find that you actually just need to trim off a tiny little bit. Now I find it's easier with a very sharp pair of bigger scissors. Um, some people like to use a, a short, a, a pair of little scissors, sort of embroidery type scissors. Um, what you need is to make sure that your scissors are nice and sharp. That's the most important thing. And you're going to be going through all of the layers. Now, if I'm doing one of these normally, I would generally pop a little bit of Decaville on, certainly on the lining, just to give it a bit of extra stability. Um, in this instance, because I'm just doing this for a demo, I haven't actually added anything. And this is the same pieces of fabric that I used to show you thumb locks. So um, I'm, I'm kind of repurposing. So once you've cut your rectangle out, I think you can see there that I've cut a rectangle, you can test to see if you think it's cut adequately. You don't want any fabric to be showing inside of the rectangle. That's not quite enough. Um, so I'm just going to take out a little bit more. And this is sometimes something that you do have to do. Just kind of keep going, taking just a little tiny bit more until it's absolutely spot on. Now that bit of stitching that I do just stops this all moving and fraying too much around the outsides. Um, and for me, that's an essential. There's nothing worse when you see a thumb, a, a twist lock put in and you can see bits of thread hanging out the middle. So just keep going until you, until that, the lip that's around the outside of your, on the, uh, sorry, around the inside um, aperture of your lock sits just inside of your rectangle and that's fine. I've got a couple of threads there that, need to come off now I would then use a little bit of fray check around the outside um, I'm not going to do that because I usually leave the fray check to dry otherwise it gets a bit gloopy um, but it's worth putting a little bit of fray check on just to make sure that there's no fraying. So you can see now that I have that rectangular aperture is sitting perfectly. Now I marked where my little screw holes were. And I'm going to, I'm just going to poke out 
the uh, whoops, the contents of the hole on my um, leather cutter because they do get a bit bunged up with fabrics from a previous cut. And I'm going to use that to create holes where I marked my holes on the uh, using the, the back of my piece of hardware. They don't need to be massive holes and because I'm going through lots of layers I've kind of got the fabric is kind of stuck in there. It's just exactly the same on the other side. Now some of these have four holes, some only have two holes. They are all different. I just twist it, that usually helps to get the bits out but not always. In this instance not. So I'm just going to poke the bits out with my pin. Because pins are multi-purpose you can use them for everything. I'm going to my front bit in place and I don't use glue I just use my finger now to ease the fabric down around the outside of that lip and I'll take my backing plate and I'll pop it on so that it's matched up and then I'm going to take my first screw And my little screwdriver I'm just going to pop that screw in until it bites I'm not doing it up properly I'm just putting it in until it bites I'm going to take the second screw It'd be easier with a magnetic screwdriver but my magnetic screwdriver has disappeared and I'm putting the second screw in until it bites once it's bitten, I can just straighten that up if it's gone wonky at all. And then tighten the screws. Now some people like to put a little bit of Loctite or um, super glue or um, one of the sort of extra strong glues in. I've got a thread there from my, uh, where I did my stitching, which I can remove. thread that just needs to it's caught underneath there that's it and there we have our flat part caught perfectly now you can see that there's no threads inside of that hole and that's what I mean about the threads you need to make sure that the hole you make is just fractionally bigger than the hole in your hardware and that's fitted perfectly the second half well you kind of know this already um, Obviously this piece has already got a lining on it so I'm just going to unfold it because we don't actually want the lining. Again we're going to use the, uh, I'm going to figure out which holes we need to use on our um, back plate. Because as I said before, I've said before on many occasions these are generic and they don't, it's not one size fits all. Um, they send out a sort of a generic back plate with each of these, and this one actually doesn't fit very well at all. But um, so it goes through the. If I put it through the the first and the fourth hole, I've actually got three holes that are not used there. So I'd mark centrally on the point where I want it to to sit, and I know that I'm going through the first and the fourth hole. So I'll use my, my uh, back plate to make the marks. Again, I would add a bit of Decaville to the back of the lining just where I'm going to do this, just to give it some strength. And you're going to be going through all of the layers. So it's worth just poking. I know a lot of people use seam rippers for this. It's not my thing. I just don't do seam rippers for this. I feel much more in control of a... Uh, 
the craft knife than I do of a seam ripper. So you're going to turn it over. You can add a little bit of extra stabiliser, a bit of spare faux leather if you've got it, um, or a piece of deco bill, and then add your back plate. I'm not going to bend all this out because if I do, then I won't ever be able to use this again. So you add your back plate, push it right down, and then I like to push my prongs outwards because, and then put a little bit of um, duct tape over the top to stop any of these sharp edges rubbing on the inside of my bag. Um, just pop it down as, as firmly as it will go and push the prongs out and a little bit of uh, duct tape over the top. I'm not going to push this out because then I can't use it again, but I can take this off. So you kind of see how that's, that's working. And then that is your lock fitted. And the same technique applies to all of these sort of locks. It doesn't matter whether it's a large one or a little one, oval or rectangle. So that the marks that I made on the outside, I would normally do with my chalk marker because they will rub off. Um, I used a pen on there so that you can see it. Um, if I were using a pen, which I don't ever do, um, I would press it before, I would give it a, a go with the iron before I actually fitted this so that those lines disappear. Um, but that's how you fit a twist lock. It's, I think, the most important thing to remember is um, that you need to make your hole in your flap bigger than the hole that you, the, the, than the um, mark that you make when you mark from the back plate because you need for the fabric not to be stretched around that lip it needs to the lip on the front part needs to sit nicely within that hole but it doesn't need to be too big if it's too big this whole thing will wobble about and you can either use say a pair of sharp scissors you could even use a craft knife if you wanted to or you can use the uh, the cutters um, and a hammer all of them work exceedingly well it's about um, cutting carefully about just edging off a little bit more and that line of stitching that I do around the outside of that first marked hole just keeps all of the layers together now ideally one would stay below you would say you would need foam you can see that this sits nice and flat against the foam this has got a piece of headliner inside of it none of these fabrics have been interfaced so <coughs> possibly less thick than it would be but you can push this down so if you're using a thicker foam um, it will sit beautifully on the front what you don't want is for there to be a huge gap between the fabric or the foam and the front part of this uh, hardware likewise on the back you need it to sit flush and sit nicely on the back but you can see that works perfectly